Divine Inheritance and the Evolution of Man Just as we have patterns of inheritance in the natural realm, we also have patterns of inheritance in the spiritual and divine realms. Many of us are familiar with the simple genetics of inheritance and how reproduction takes place. You know that the man produces sperm cells which fertilizes the egg cells in the woman that eventually becomes a zygote. This zygote actively divides to become the embryo which develops into a baby. Your spirit originated from God and not from your parents. Your spirit soul came from God and not from your biological parents. So your spirit soul does not resemble your parents but God. Every spirit of man has the image of God, either a Christian or a Muslim, every spirit of man has the image of God because a spirit is not flowing in the life of God doesn't mean the spirit doesn't have the potential for divinity. An unbeliever is a potential son of God. All he needs to do is to believe in Christ and identify himself with Christ and afterwards, the life of Christ will start flowing through him. So when you know that unbelievers are potential sons of God, you won't hate them but rather have compassion on them and love them as your potential brothers. All men have something in common under God. Our God is the God of all flesh. With this understanding, your perspective about Muslims and men of other religions should change. Only love demonstrated through you can shine the light of Christ to their hearts which will open their hearts to what they are missing out in Christ. So all spirits came from God and all spirits of man have the full potential for divinity in them which is activated through Christ consciousness in the soul that connects to the spirit. It is your physical body that you got from your parents and from the earth. Your physical body is a mixture of memories and organic materials of the earth. It is composed of inherited memories and organic materials accumulated through food on the earth. And I will explain. The inherited memories are simply collections of genetic information inherited from one generation to another down to you. You should already know that all information that influenced all your physical looks, features and traits is stored in your DNA and came from your DNA. The DNA is the basic molecule unit of hereditary information passed down from parents to offsprings. It is this molecule that controls all other cells on how to behave through the information contained in it. In the process of reproduction, the sexual gamete cell contains 23 chromosomes. A chromosome is simply a DNA molecule with a condensed structure with some histone proteins. The man produces the the gamete cell called the sperm cells or spermatozoa, while the woman produces the gamete cell called the ova or egg cells. A whole human cell has 46 chromosomes in total which are 23 pairs of homozygous chromosomes, one of these pairs determine the sex of the baby. So the sperm cell carrying the 23 chromosomes which carry all the genetic information from the man will fertilize the egg cell in the woman to form a zygote. It is this zygote that builds up to form the physical body of the child. There is a certain stage of development of the baby in the womb of the mother that the heart of the child starts breathing. It is at this stage that the spirit soul enters the body of the baby before birth. So there is actually the process of spirit of man entering the body of the baby being formed. Some mystics call this reincarnation. There are many things which take place in the spirit world that are not written in the Bible. It's only if God open your eyes to see them that you will see it. There are some things I know about the human spirit which I won't teach yet, I will postpone it till the future, until God leads me to teach them. So the sperm cell from the man carries genetic memories and information of the man and the lineage the man came from. This is also true for the egg cell of the woman too. So in your physical body you have a lot of information and memories which were inherited from many generations before you down to your parents and I have explained that it is not only physical traits memory that the DNA has, there are many other memories in the quantum invisible realm that the DNA has that even science has not discovered yet. Even water is capable of retaining memories of words spoken to it and you should know that over 70% of the human body is water. So in actuality, the DNA also keeps records of spiritual things inherited from your generations before you and your lineage. From the mother side and from the father side, both positive things and negative things and these memories and recordings do not change automatically even after your born again experience. I will explain. When you are born again, it is your spirit that got born again not even your soul not to talk of your physical body. This is what many believers do not understand and they keep on struggling with ancestral issues thinking that all that will end automatically after being born again and some pastors are not helping matters too, 
they will innocently teach them false things that once you are born again, all those things are over automatically. But this is not true. If it's true, the scripture won't have told you to renew your mind after your born again experience. We see this all across the scriptures, that there are strongholds in the soul that need to be pulled down. If this is true for the soul, then it is also true for the physical body. It is the soul that controls the physical body. The physical body doesn't have a mind of its own. As your soul is being transformed, it reflects in your physical body. There is need for lifestyle of diligence to see to it that your soul is transformed and I have explained that true transformation does not take place by just cramming the scriptures, true transformation takes place by engaging the Spirit of God and you engage the Spirit of God in you first with your heart and then with your mouth. This is the process of any kind of salvation. You see, salvation is in levels. Many do not even know that salvation is in levels. There is salvation for the spirit, and then for the soul and then for the physical body. It is your spirit that gets saved first, then as you renew your mind and your soul gets transformed, your soul too gets saved and as your physical body is being transformed from the state of mortality to immortality, then your physical body is saved. Salvation also means security or being secured. Just like you are conscious that your spirit is eternally secured in Christ because of your faith in Christ. Your soul needs to be secured too. Haven't you seen Christians being harmed by the occultic people and they run mad? Yes, I have seen a Christian run mad before and it was a demonic attack. In fact, I have seen a Christian who speaks in tongues that was charmed and she was manipulated by this evil occult and she obeyed what she was commanded to do and all this is happening because the soul is not secured with the light of Christ. And of course you have seen Christians who die through stray bullets and many more. This is because the physical body is not immortally strong, it is not secured. This is not the will of God for man. God doesn't just want your spirit alone to be saved but also your soul and your physical body and that's why he gave us the eternal life. The eternal life is like a gift and a weapon given to us to free our soul and physical body from the pangs of death, sin and corruption and you can only unwrap and activate this gift as you engage it through meditations and prayers of intimacy. As you constantly meditate on God's word or on Christ and commune in intimacy with him, you activate the flow of the eternal life energy from your spirit into your soul and physical body. It is this flow of the energy of God's spirit that actually transforms your soul and physical body. What it does to your physical body is to rewrite your DNA into the DNA of the man called Christ Jesus, because as a son of God, you are born again after the order of the man called Jesus Christ who is the perfect man, the perfection of divinity and godliness in the flesh. All your ancestors in the lineage that you came from have different kinds of weaknesses and records of wrongs that are trying to find expression through you, and you can only clean, wipe off and format these records through the divine life energy or the river of life that flows into your body cells and DNA. Where this river of life flows into, it brings transformation, purity and reality of perfect life. There are many weaknesses that you have inherited from your parents or the lineage you came from, but as you engage this divine life in you and it flows into your DNA and body cells, you are divinely charged up and upgraded in your body cells, and you are gradually being transformed at the cellular level from mortality to immortality. Please get my book titled, The Divine DNA Science, where I explain details on how you can do this. Once your body cells are upgraded into the divine DNA or the DNA of Christ, then you will find yourself effortlessly living the Christ life and manifesting the full spectrum of the Christ energy and once your DNA is being transformed this way, then the sperm cells or egg cells that you produce are no longer ordinary cells. But divinely upgraded cells with divine potentials. When couples whose body cells are transformed this way, copulate and conceive a baby, that baby can never be an ordinary baby, such a baby will definitely be born with divine abilities meaning that the baby inherited the DNA from both parents that carry the divine genetic information in their cells. This is the future Christ civilization that God has in his plan for mankind. So God is already breeding sons who are serious about their divine advancement, who will advance to a point and give birth to children that will be born having divine intelligence and potentials as a natural ability and these children will grow up and take it even further to give birth to more advanced children and this will continue until the whole of humanity is transformed to become divine beings in reality. 
This is the unveiling of the divine inheritance and evolution of man to mankind.